الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الخلاة حي على الخلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهر أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له لا شريك له في ربوبيته وألوهيته وأسمائه وصفاته وأشهر أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى أزواجه الطاهرات أمهات المؤمنين وعلى خلفاء الراشدين وعلى أصحابه أجمعين وعلى كل من اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين قال الله عز وجل في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار أما بعد All praises are for Allah سبحانه وتعالى We praise Him, we thank Him, we glorify Him, we seek His help and aid and we ask Allah to forgive us. We ask Allah to protect us. We ask Allah to keep us rightly guided. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our own selves and from the sins that we commit. Indeed, whoever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide. And whoever He causes to go astray, there is none who can guide. I testify that there is none deserves to be worshipped except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. Verily, the best of speech is the book of Allah. The best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated. And every religious innovation is a bid'ah. And every bid'ah is a misguidance. And every misguidance will be in the fire of hell. Wa'yadhu billah. May Allah protect all of us from the fire of hell. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ibad Allah. <coughs> As we are ending the calendar year of 2021 and approaching 2022, it should prompt us and it should motivate us to take an evaluation of ourselves, to take an inventory of ourselves, to do a muhasaba, a self-evaluation of the things that we have done good 
and what we have done wrong and to come up with some sort of a balance sheet to see where he stands before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What have we accomplished and what do we want to accomplish to come up with some sort of a balance sheet? And most businesses, they do that. And smart people, they do that. They evaluate themselves to see where they stand. If they were to die now, how they would return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this has been a fundamental principle, fundamental basis in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah Al-Hashr, Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat liqad That, O oh, you who have iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling out to the people of iman, those who believe. As much as we are listening to this today, it's a testimony that we have iman, we are listening to this. Allah calls out to us, draws our attention so that we will listen. He says, Ittaqullah, shield yourself from the anger and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by having taqwa of Allah. Fear Allah, be always conscious of Allah, do your duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every soul should examine what it has put forward for tomorrow. Every soul should examine, every one of you should examine what it has done for the future. What you have put forward for tomorrow. What's tomorrow? Yawmul Qiyamah. When we will all be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give an account how we did. So every soul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing us. Ya yuhaladheena amanu taqullah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat ligad. That every soul look forward to what they have put forward for tomorrow. What preparations have you made for tomorrow? What preparations have you made for yawmul qiyamah? For the day of judgment, for the hereafter? When you will be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wattaqullah. Again, fear Allah. Observe your duties to Allah. Be conscious of Allah at all times. Put a barrier between yourself and the sins. Wattaqullah. Fear Allah. Inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amaloon. Fear Allah and always be aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is always aware of what you are doing. And Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, he said that in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that it is compulsory, it is obligatory on everyone to examine himself and herself to see where they stand, to examine herself to do a muhasaba, self-evaluation to see where they stand, to find out what they have done and what they have not done, and to do a self-audit, a self-audit to evaluate yourselves, to see what you have done and what yet to be done. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues by saying, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَصُوا اللَّهِ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَصُوا اللَّهِ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ أُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ That do not be like that. Meaning that if you fail to do this, then there is a consequence to it. There is a serious consequence to it. That do not be like those who have forgotten Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's the consequence? Allah made them forget themselves. Do not be like those who put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the bottom of your priority list. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you forget what's important in your lives. Allah will make you forget what's your priorities. What will benefit you? Allah will make you forget what is important to you. That when we forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we put Allah at the bottom of our priority list, then 
there is a serious consequence, my brothers and my sisters. And we will be so consumed with everything else that when you forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is not your priority, then we will be so consumed with everything else, with the glitter and the glamour of this world, everything, the distractions of this world. We will be so consumed with this world, with its glamour and its glory and its beauty, that we will forget what is important and we will forget about our goal, about striving to achieve Jannah. We will be consumed with our own selfishness and we will not be thinking about others with what we need rather than what others need. It will be superficial need, not a true need. And we will be consumed by that and we will forget our own selves and about what really benefits us. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, he said, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. That bring yourself to account before you are brought to an account. That evaluate yourselves before you're being evaluated. When? When you'll be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said to do it now. When you still have time, do it now. Evaluate yourself. Put yourself as if you're standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have you done enough to earn Jannah? Have you done enough if you were to die today? Have you done enough to earn Jannah? This life, my brothers and sisters, the life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with, it's a currency. It's money that you use it either to buy Jannah or Jahannam. It's your choice. So that's the currency that Allah gave you. The life that you have, that's the currency either to buy Jannah are you working towards buying Jannah right now? Or are you buying Jahannam right now? So this is up to you. And he continues, Umar ibn al-Khattab, he said, Wazinu anfusakum qabla antu zanu That put yourself on the scale now before your deeds are being placed on the scale on yawm al-qiyamah. That do it now. Put yourself on the scale before your deeds are being placed on the scale on yawm al-qiyamah. فَإِنَّهُ أَخَفُّ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الْحِسَابَ غَدًا أَن تُحَاسِبُ وَنْفُسَكُمَ الْيَوْمِ That for verily, it will be easier upon you on the day of judgment if you evaluate yourself today. It will be easier on you on yawm al-qiyamah if you evaluate yourself today, if you take stock of yourself today, you do a self audit of yourself today. For your judgment on the day of judgment, you actually have to start judging yourself today and prepare yourself for it today. That it will be easier for you tomorrow if you start evaluating yourself today and prepare yourself today for yawmul qiyamah wa tazayyanu lil aradil akbar kadha al akbar yawma idhin tu'raduna la takhfa minkum khafiyah and he said umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu an and adorn yourself for the day of the greatest display adorn yourself for the day of the greatest display on that day when all your deeds will be on display and nothing will be hidden. Subhanallah. So he's saying all your deeds, all your actions, even the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has covered up in this world, even the ones that you're ashamed of, even the ones that you're embarrassed about, all will be on display on the day of Yawm al On that day, nothing will be concealed or hidden. 
everything will be displayed on that day, embarrassing or not. So he is saying, imagine yourself on that day when everything will be on display and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you, have you done this? Have you done this? And where are your good deeds? So Umar ibn al-Khattab is saying, Tazayyanu, beautify, adorn yourself with good deeds today before you're being evaluated on Yawm al-Qiyamah. My dear brothers and sisters, and there is no better way to be able to do all of this than to remember death. There is no better way to evaluate yourself and to do all of this than to remember death. And the Prophet ﷺ told us, that be prompt or remember the spoiler of all joys as often as possible. That remember the destroyer of all pleasures as much as possible. And what's the destroyer of all pleasures? Al maut, death. And if he says to remember it, if the Prophet ﷺ says to remember it, it means that we understand from it that really we do not remember death often. In fact, we run away from it. We don't like to associate it to ourselves. We associate it to someone else. We don't like to talk about it. We don't like to bring up the topic of death. Why? Because it is the destroyer of all pleasures, the spoiler of all joys. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, I haven't seen a reality that resembles fiction more than death. That Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, because everyone knows that they're going to die, yet everyone acts as if they will live forever. Like a fiction, like it's not reality, as if it's not going to happen, yet it will happen to each and every one of us. Why is it that we run away from it? Because as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, it spoils all the joy. It's the spoiler of joys. It's the destroyer of all pleasures. Because he, but my brothers and my sisters, it is not all negative. In fact, death, it's not negative at all. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَإِنَّهُ مَا ذَكَرَهُ أَحَدٌ فِي دَيْقٍ مِنَ الْعَيْشِ إِلَّا وَسَعَهُ عَلَيْهِ وَلَا فِي سِعَةٍ إِلَّا دَيَّكَهُ عَلَيْهِ That no one will remember it. And he or she who is going through some hardship, remembering death will only bring ease to that hardship. That how many people, they face difficulty and hardship and agony and despair and they start wishing for death. And how many people in fact take their own lives when they're in hardship and despair? Why? Because they do not see a way out of it. They do not see a way out of the hardship that they are in. They think that the hardship or the despair or the agony will last forever. And that's what the whisper of the shaitan is. The shaitan whispers to them that what you're going through will not end. It will last forever. But when the remembrance of death comes to that person, it brings them relief. It brings them relief that this thing that they're suffering from can never last. Whatever they're going through will never last. And it will come to an end. And after it comes to an end, and if you're a righteous person, then you can expect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the best of reception, the best of homes, the best of status, whatever you're suffering from, and whatever you're running away from in this life that is causing despair and agony, it will be remedied on the day of judgment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you.
And this is the complete comfort that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Imagine the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, Man dakhal al jannah la tabla thiyabahu wa la yafna shababahu. Man dakhal al jannah la tabla thiyabuhu wa la yafna shababuhu. That whoever enters Jannah, paradise, his clothes will not be worn out, nor will his youth be spent away. So we will be young and we will be young forever. We will be young meaning that we will be healthy forever, happy forever, and whatever we possess will be eternal, will never go away, will be everlasting. And when we remember that, it does something to our lives because remembering death is not something that is destructive or even something that needs to be stressful. Death to us Muslims, my brothers and sisters, to those who believe in Allah and those who believe in a creator, death to us Muslims is a passageway because there is something that follows it. It's not the end. So what you do here now, what you do here today, will affect your tomorrow. What you do here now, what you do here today, will affect Yawmul Qiyamah for you. And remembering that can change your life drastically, can change your priorities drastically. And you have to ask yourself, my brothers and sisters, each one of us, we have to ask ourselves this question. That what type of life am I living today? And how can remembering death change it for the better? Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een Amma ba'd My dear brothers and sisters If we are not convinced about our own mortality And how temporary life is Then we will live in this world As if we live forever We will collect in this world As if we will collect forever we will collect in it as if we are collecting forever. We will be envious and competitive. We will be jealous and selfish. And we will be very superficial, my brothers and sisters. But the question is, is this the way that a Muslim is supposed to live? Is this the way that the Prophet wasallam lived? Is this the way that the companions lived? I ask you to, to go back to the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from what you know of his life and see if this was the way that he lived. And this, is this the type of society that they built? And if it is not, then the question is, how far are we from that type of life? And that's the question for each and every one of us. How far are we from that type of life? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kun fid dunya ka'annaka gharib. That be in this world as if you're a stranger, as if you're a traveler. Be in this world as if you're passing through. So that if we analyze this hadith, how do a stranger, someone who is passing through, how do, does he operate in a strange city? Well, he just collect whatever he needs to get on on his destination to his hometown or his home city. Whatever he needs, a stranger or a traveler in a, in a city that he doesn't know, he only collect whatever he needs and he moves on. He, they don't seek to settle in that city because he knows he doesn't live there. They don't seek to build long-term relationships there because he knows he doesn't live there. He is traveling, he's moving on. So they never built homes in it. 
They never built long-term relationships in it because their attention is to move on to their hometown. And so, my brothers and sisters, in this life, we in this life have a destination also. This is not our home. This is not our home. We are just passing through. Each and every one of us, we are just passing by. We are just collecting whatever we need that will benefit us. Yawmul Qiyamah. That's it. We are just passing through. And Ibn Umar radiallahu an says, just to reflect how sensitive they were, he said, إِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَذِرِ الصَّبَاحِ وَإِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَذِرِ الْمَسَاحِ That this is how quick death can come to you. That if you reach the evening, do not wait for the morning. And if you reach the morning, do not wait for the evening. That take meaning that if Allah bless you to see the morning, don't expect to see the evening. If Allah bless you to see the evening, don't expect to see the morning. And he continues, وَخُذْ مِنْ صِحَّتِكَ لِمَرَدِكَ وَمِنْ حَيَاتِكَ لِمَوْتِكَ Take advantage of your health before you're sick. And take advantage of your life before you die, before your death. Because once you die, you can't do anything else. Your book of deeds is closed. It's sealed. Done deal. Except we know another hadith ex uh, explain it. Three sources of good deeds. إِذَا مَاتَ إِبْنُ آدَمِ إِنْقَطَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ صَدَقَ جَارِيَةِ أو إِلْمٌ يُنْتَفَعُ بِهِ أو وَلَدٌ صَالِحِ يَدْعُ لَهُ That when the son of Adam dies, all his good deeds finish except from three sources. One, perpetual charity, knowledge that he dispenses, and a righteous child who will make dua for him. My brothers and sisters, so when you're sick, most of what you can do, when you're healthy, you won't be able to do it. So he says, Ex don't expect or don't have high hopes. Don't have extended hope. Because even if you actually reach one morning, there is one evening that you will not reach. And it will be one morning or one evening that you will not reach. And it will also be that one morning, the people will say that so and so passed away. Everyone will say so and so passed away. My brothers and sisters, it will not be so and so, it will be you. It will be you. That so and so, will be you. The thing is, it would have been absolutely fine when someone dies and that's the end of it. But when you die, you will be taken by the angels. You don't know if it's the angels of Rahmah or the angels of punishment. And then you will be taken in your grave and then you will be questioned about your religion, about Allah, about the messenger, about your life. Who is your master? Well, if we do not remember death, and uh, then how can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be our master? Not to deny our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's hard for Allah to be your master because you believe in something else and you listen to something else. You will be like that hamster in the wheel, always chasing. The hamster in the wheel always going in circles, chasing. Chasing. And that wheel is life. And that life is consumption. And you're always chasing after something. And you will be, never be satisfied. Why? Because, my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't create this life to satisfy you. Allah didn't create this to satisfy you. So we are always running and chasing after something, especially in this world that we live in today. It has a more of a popular culture of materialism, that everyone, they judge each other by how much they make, how big their house is, what car they drive. It's all a materialistic world we live in today, competitive world. 
So how do we judge each other? That's how we judge each other, by how much you make. So we are bombarded by these things every day. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not your master, something else is your master. Maybe fashion is your master. Chasing after one fashion to the next. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not your master, something else is your master. Maybe electronics is your master. Chasing after the latest and the greatest. If Allah is not your master, something else is your master. Maybe your career is your master. Going after your career and losing track of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe that's your master. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not your master, maybe something else. What is your master? The dollar is your master. Abdul Dinar wa Abdul Dirham. Slave of the dollar, slave of the dinar and the dirham. Now it's Abdul Dular. Slave of the dollar. The dollar is your master. So this is what everyone is chasing after to collect more and more. But I ask you, my brothers and sisters, is there anything in this world worth giving your life for? Anything in this dunya worth you giving your life for? Or is there anything that is worth you giving five years, 10 years, 15 years of your life for? I'll give you an example. There was, there was this man, he was building a home. It was more than a home, it was more like a mansion. Imported materials, expensive, huge, luxurious. And just before completion, there was a fire. Fire broke out. And when they came and they find out what was the cause of the fire, it was lightning. Lightning. Lightning strike and, and, and caused much of the damage. Now, imagine, you will say that's a raw deal. My brothers and sisters, you will say that's a raw deal. Now imagine yourself spending five years working hard, 10 years, 15 years, trying to build something like this. Not a mansion, trying to build a home, something like this. And then, in the blink of an eye, it can go away. In the blink of an eye, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys it. Then you will say that's a raw deal. That everything, what you have, what you had, there's nothing to show for it anymore. It's gone. In the blink of an eye. But my brothers and my sisters, that's not the deal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for each and every one of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah ashtara min al mu'minina anfusahum wa mu'alahum bi anna lahum al jannah. That verily Allah has purchased from the believers their lives and their wealth in exchange for paradise, in exchange for jannah. So Allah wants something from you. And this world wants something from you. So you have to decide who you're giving it to. Are you giving it to Allah? Or are you giving it to the world? This world, the dunya, chasing after the dunya. So you're going out every day, night and day. We're selling ourselves. Our time is our life. Five minutes, ten minutes. Every day, we're, we're, we're selling ourselves to, Allah, to, to the dunya. You, when you go out, you spend your time as your life. So, but on the other hand, you can sell that yourself. You could sell that to whatever this world is offering you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already told you, whatever this world is offering you, it will leave you or you will leave it. That consider the things that you had, everything that you bought, either it's old and you toss it or you die and you will leave it so my brothers and sisters we need to remember that to set our priorities right to live a life that is selfless and not selfish so when we examine our needs our needs we have to examine if it's a superficial need or if it's a genuine need and we have to always remember that we are mortals and we will die we will die one day and it can happen anytime. Anytime there is no age for it. 
we just have to prepare for it. So my brothers and my sisters, as I mentioned before, that our lives, our life that Allah bless us with, it's the currency, it's the money to either buy Jannah or Jahannam. It's your call. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to know our priorities and to set our priorities. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to avoid the fitna out there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be better Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us uh, so that we could practice Islam and we could follow the Quran and the Sunnah in our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to achieve the Jannah that He has prepared for us. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhaba nar. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannata wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin wa amal wa na'udhu bika min al-nar wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin wa amal wa nas'aluka al-khayr ma sa'alaka abduka Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa na'udhu bika min al-sharri ma sta'adhaka minhu abduka Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يا حي يا قيوم وبرحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وقيم الصلاة